An ecosystem consists of all organisms and non-living entities that occur and interact in a particular area at the same time. Ecological communities only include living organisms. In ecosystems, energy flows and matter cycle between the living and non-living components. Ecosystems interact with one another, and the term ecosystem is most often used to describe somewhat self-contained geographic areas. Adjacent ecosystems may interact with each other and share resources, and these areas where ecosystems meet in a transitional zone are called ecotones. The conversion of solar energy into chemical bonds in sugars is called primary production. The total chemical energy produced by autotrophs is called gross primary production. The energy that remains after respiration is called net primary production, and it is used to generate biomass, like leaves, stems, and roots. Energy is used by consumers to generate their own biomass in what is called secondary production. The rate at which energy is converted to biomass is termed productivity. Freshwater wetlands, tropical rainforests, coral reefs, algal beds tend to have the highest net primary productivities. Deserts, tundras, open ocean all have some of the lowest primary productivities. Productivity is influenced by the availability of nutrients. And nutrients are elements and compounds that organisms need for survival. Elements and compounds like nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus are needed in large amounts, and these are called macronutrients. Nutrients like zinc, copper, and iron are needed but in smaller amounts, and they are called micronutrients. Nitrogen tends to be the limiting nutrient in marine systems or saltwater systems, and phosphorus tends to be the limiting nutrient in freshwater systems like lakes. Elements move through ecosystems in nutrient cycles, also known as biogeochemical cycles. Elements and molecules travel through the atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and biosphere in dynamic equilibrium. Nutrients move from one reservoir or a pool to another for varying amounts of time, and this is called residence time. You, a cow, grass, sedimentary rocks, the atmosphere are all reservoirs for carbon, for example. When a reservoir releases more material than it accepts, this is called a source. When a reservoir accepts more material than it releases, this is called a sink. And flux is the rate at which material move between reservoirs. So understanding the different ways that reservoirs behave is very important to understanding the various biogeochemical cycles.